morning and welcome to Begin in the Word. Our text today comes from Proverbs chapter 8, verse 4 through 11. The Bible says, To you, O men, I call, and my cry is to the children of man. O simple ones, learn prudence. O fools, learn sense. Hear, for I will speak noble things, and from my lips will come what is right. For my mouth will utter truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are righteous. There is nothing twisted or crooked in them. They are all straight to him who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Take my instruction instead of silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than jewels and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. Today's study continues in Solomon's oracle to his son, Today's text will include some important progressive parallel phrases. This outline gives us a visualization for where we are working in the larger oracle. We are in the home stretch. In earlier episodes, we heard from Lady Wisdom in her first appeal. Today, we are working on the second appeal of Wisdom, the first strophe. These two appeals from Lady Wisdom serve as literary bookends of this oracle. She is the heroine in this great narrative that Solomon is offering. Lady Wisdom is well into her second appeal, asserting her rightful place as champion over the folly female. As previously noted, this entire oracle of Solomon casts Lady Wisdom against female folly. We have seen over and over female folly indicted for her wicked ways and Solomon's sons warned to avoid her. We have heard from Lady Wisdom throughout the oracle. Now it is as if She rises to her closing arguments. This final text is a lovely oratory. It is filled with refreshing and vibrant words. Her ideals transcend simple facts and rise into the arena of abstract truth. The first phrase includes a progressive parallel of the word men and the phrase children of men. This may seem like a minor detail, but it is not. The word men and man are very different words in the Hebrew. Men is translated from the Hebrew word Isham, and man is translated from the Hebrew word Adam. Isham in this context must be understood to describe men in the highest sense, such as political leaders and the scholarly, like the way it is used in Isaiah 53 and 3 or Psalms 141 verse 4. The phrase children of Adam is a completely different matter. These are men that are more connected to the earth, more material and carnal in their worldly view. Lady Wisdom's cry spans to the full breadth of mankind, both great and small, wise and simple, powerful and plain. All are candidates for her word. For the next phrase, we invite you to go back to episode on Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2 through 7. There are several words used throughout the book of Proverbs to capture the concept of what we loosely call wisdom. In this phrase, two of those words, prudence and sense, are set as progressive terms. These words are added to the terms that have been used to date. The table on your screen shows the collection of these terms, their meaning. The first two terms we covered in the aforementioned episode. The latter two are new terms to our study. Lady Wisdom explains that her words allow a person to grasp the most subtle truths within the fabric of reality. Her words allow a person to differentiate themselves from the masses, to achieve higher truth and position oneself for distinction. High Lady Wisdom says she will speak of noble things and what is right and utter truth, but that wickedness is never spoken by her. Noble in that her words are those that are spoken by leaders of men, as indicated in the meaning of the Hebrew word for noble, great military leaders, religious leaders, political leaders, captains, governors, and princes. What a debacle it is when a fool leads mankind. If history has taught us nothing else, it rings clear that great leaders are also great thinkers. Only in intimate association with Lady Wisdom will the leader bring people out of tyranny and into freedom, out of bondage and to independence. If you are a leader a boss, a school teacher, a mom, dad, the list goes on. Effective leadership must be marked by your insistence on a close connection to Lady Wisdom. Lady Wisdom says, 
Hear, for I will speak noble things, and from my lips will come what is right. For my mouth will utter truth, wickedness is an abomination to my lips. What is right in that her words reflect the essence of the original Hebrew word, evenness, prosperity, concord, straightness, rectitude, equity. Utter truth in that wisdom understands truth as absolute. Lady Wisdom offers truth as a complex thing, but nevertheless a binary thing. Wickedness is an abomination in that Lady Wisdom teaches a world of ethical truths, a world of right and wrong, a universe where, while sometimes complicated, the wise person stands on the side of truth and right with a sense of absolutism. Lady Wisdom sees a connection between wise living and right living. Said another way, wisdom, wise living, is one and the same as morality, right living. Lady Wisdom is throwing down the gauntlet, saying one cannot be wise but be unethical. One cannot claim to be intelligent and discerning and yet live an immoral lifestyle. How often in our Western culture people claim to be wise, to be learned, to be professors, teachers, scholars, university leaders, to understand the mysteries of life, yet they live the most hedonistic life one can imagine. Lady Wisdom says they are liars. She says they are not learned if they live after their own lust. She says they are not professors of good if they are profligate in their sin. She says they are not teachers of scholarship if they are treacherous in their dealings. She says the wise are also righteous. Lady Wisdom says, all the words of my mouth are righteous. There is nothing twisted or crooked in them. Watch the workman now as he aligns his carpenter's level and strings his plumb bob. He is using those tools to make sure the wall is straight, the floor is not sloped, the handrail on the stairway is at the correct angle. Nothing twisted, nothing crooked. What insane person would think the construction of human behavior would take any less skill? Watch again and see the wise young man use the word of God, the wisdom of the Lord, as he plans his evening, as he considers his education, as he applies for a job, as he devises his pursuit of that young woman. This young man is using the tools provided by the creator of wisdom, Yahweh, to achieve the outcome that Lady Wisdom promises. Ask yourself when you walk up a set of stairs, how important is it to you that the stairs are constructed correctly? Now ask yourself again when you examine human behavior, how important is the same? Lady Wisdom says, they are all straight to him who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Contrast the moral certitude offered by Lady Wisdom with the ambiguity offered by today's postmodernist contingent truth, there is no right and wrong, indeterminate invertebrates before us. She is not wringing her hands in doubt as they are. She is not uncertain regarding what must be done. They have no clue. She knows. She is not standing in front of a classroom filled with college students telling them that high truth is a myth that cannot be found because it does not exist. She is telling all who will listen that there is a truth, that truth can be found, and that truth is straight to the one that will take the time to understand it and right to the one that is humble enough to find it. The ideas of these famous postmodernists shown on your screen are not new. They are retreads of old, tired ideas that were birthed millennia ago out of hedonistic desires. Just ask Folly Female and she will tell you. Lady Wisdom says there is an answer. Lady Wisdom says, Take my instruction instead of silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold, for wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. Let me ask you, how much did you pay for that professor to tell you there is no such thing as truth? How much did you pay for an education that taught you there is no truth, 
wherewith to be educated about. The irony is almost funny. The only ones laughing are at the bank right now depositing the money that you borrowed. Lady Wisdom says her truth is valuable. It's worth more than gold, silver, and jewels. Without doubt, a good education is well worth the money, underscore, and bold the word good education. There is a battle going on in this world between the forces of good and evil, between Lady Wisdom and Folly Female. Lady Wisdom says there is truth. You can know truth. Truth will be your salvation. Folly Female says, ignore all that. Don't think about truth. Think about the flesh and indulge your every physical desire till you have emptied your flesh of all its energy and found yourself rotting in her grave. Hear now the words of wisdom's source, Jesus Christ. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Thanks for joining us today on Begin in the Word. I hope as you have begun today in the Word of God, you will live out today in the Word of God.